Okay, the next funny thing I read was, I think a few days ago, the president said, he has used the reserves for 20 over times already. How come nobody know? I thought the only time we used the reserves was in 2009 for the resilience package. All of a sudden, days before the president leave, huh, he gave us this revelation. Hey, I've been using the reserve for 20 over times. Any of you know that or not? I think nobody knows, you know. So what was the reserves used for? Various projects such as reclaiming land and SERS, HDP, Selective On Block Redevelopment Scheme. Now this I cannot understand. I'm not accountant, huh? but I cannot understand this one because in almost 9 out of 10 years, the government has a surplus, billions of dollars. Almost every year, the government has land sales about 10 billion, which they don't count in the budget. Every year on the average, the net investment income from the reserves that the government can use is 7 billion dollars. With all this money coming in every year, you have but you have surplus, you have net investment income. Why you need to draw from the reserves? Now here's the funniest part. Nobody ever asked the obvious question. Since you draw 20 over times, how much in total did you draw? I heard before we get to vote that day, uh, somebody will tell us. Uh, or do we have to wait until the next president? <laughs> Funny, right? Now, then we get explanations like, what is the problem? Reserves make land, then SERS, then HDB sell the flat, sell the land, the money go to HDB, go to GIC, go to government, go to Temasek. It's still all within the same government. What's the problem? You know what's the problem? The disclosure, the transparency and the accountability, depending on where the money ends up, is entirely different. very funny country. We're the only country where Parliament can approve the transfer of Changi Airport to Temasek for an amount that we don't know yet. Approve. How can you sell your airport for an amount that you don't know? But anyway, the amount came out because the, the report just came out from Changi Airport Group. 1,300 hectares of land that can be used properly in any way they want, plus Changi Airport, everything, for only 3.3 billion dollars. You know when your asset goes to Temasek, huh? they feel like it, they sell away your three power companies. No need to ask parliament, no need to be accountable to anybody. So it's not the same, it's very very different. It's so funny in Singapore during the crisis, you watch the news in parliament, all the MP asking no, tell us how much money you lost. Oh, thousand and one excuse and explanation, but cannot tell you. But anyway, the answer came out also because the Temasek report came out. In 2009, the negative annual wealth added in that year was minus $68 billion. You elect members to parliament, you have ministers who don't even tell you how much money they lost. And of course, uh, we, nobody knows how much reserves we have. Now the reason giving, you know why they cannot tell you the reasons? Some of the reasons are, if they tell you, it may raise your expectations. If you see a lot, you may ask for more money. I think it don't tell you even worse, ah, right? Some people are saying, uh, maybe there's no money in it. But don't have, lah. we have lots of reasons. Next, I talk about the topic that Gilbert has given to me, uh, which is public transport. Fares have gone up by 1%. If you read the PTC press release, Public Transport Council, the key reason on why you have to pay more is to balance the interests of the two public transport operators and the people. How to balance? They say, if they don't increase fare, they cannot buy more buses or buy more trains. This is nonsense. You know why? They have service standard, they have benchmark. It does not matter whether you increase the fare or whatever, the service standard you have to meet it right. 
what has the increasing of fares got to do with the service standard? Are you saying that if you don't increase fares, that all the transport operators don't have to adhere to the service standards that you have set for them? Don't make sense. Then you read the PDC report, even more funny. He says, okay, 1% increase. The average person who is affected, 85% of you will have to pay more. They already explained. The average you will pay more, according to the PDC, is only 15 cents a week. $8 a year is nothing. You don't need to be three years old to figure this out. Huh? Every trip you take, is two cents more. 80 cent trip, two cents more. 2.0 percent increase. One dollar trip, two cents more. Two percent increase. Two dollar trip, two cents more. One percent increase. You just leave your house once a day, go come back, uh, you'll be off four cents, right? Four cents one day, one week, seven days is 28 cents. How can it be an average of 15 cents for everybody? I don't know what type of calculator they have, but mine doesn't tell me 15 cents. So no matter how I calculate, it's at least $15 a year. No, I think they should make all these studies, calculations, PTC meetings, deliberations public. Because very stressful for people like us who do analysis, no? We have to guess, we have to, you know, because we can't see. If you show us, we can help you. Maybe there's something wrong with the figures, or maybe it, Maybe it's even better. The public transport operators will get $15 million more revenue in a year. And so to help you, the government and the operators will come up with $4 million to give you $20 transport vouchers. The profit margin of SMRT is 16.6%. The profit margin of SBS Transit is 7.5%. They say, oh, we need to increase fare because the ROTA, ROTA stands for Return on Total Assets, must be compatible with other companies. They cited two transport companies, one in Hong Kong, one in London. You heard me say earlier, 16.6% net profit margin for SMRT, 7.5% for SBS Transit. London only 7.4, Hong Kong only 5.9. Actually, uh, nobody in the world just rota, you know why? You look at any annual report, cannot find rota one, you know. It's a very unusual statistic to use. So back to the question of the 1%. It is 15 million additional revenue to the public transport operators. And the profit margin is 16.6 and 7.5. That means average about 10 plus, right? 10 plus percent of 15 million maximum make 2 million more prof profit, right? So if I make 2 million more profit and then I take out 4 million to help you to pay, I must not increase the fare, right? Don't make any sense, but I tell you the problem. All these reasons for increasing fares always based on projections. Last year, they tell you 2.5% reduction in fares because they say 63% will pay more, 37% will pay, sorry, 63% will pay less, 37% will pay more. So, works out to 2.5%. Eh? If 2.5% reduction and two-thirds of people pay less, how come the two transport companies the last financial year again record profit? Don't make sense, right? Every time they say justification, costs go up, projection this much, then every year come record profit. To me, the answer is very simple. You need to do a post implementation study. You say last year 2.5%, now one year over. Eh? Last year, July the third started. Tell us now after one year, was it 2.5 or 2 or 3 or whatever? Tell us whether it's 63% pay more or 40% or 70%. Because if you say something to justify the increase, after it's over, I think it's only fair that you give us the numbers to know whether your reasons were justified or not in the first place. $20 transport voucher. 
is only good enough to help you for this year increase. In the last 10 years, the fare increased seven times, including this year. So every year they give you twenty dollar. What about the last six times? You know, poor people very poor thing, you know, right? This year you get twenty dollar for this year. The last ten year, the other six times got twenty dollar or not? Don't have. So there is something wrong with our public transport system because the formula almost guarantee that the fare should go up. Why? Average wage increase. Normally every year wage go up, right? Average inflation. Normally every year inflation. So it's a given. Transport operator sure get fair increase. Hey partner, last year something funny happened, you know. For the first time in the history of the transport fare adjustment formula, last year the formula, the result was a decrease in fares. But then they changed to distant fare. So actually, uh, how many people pay more, how many people pay less, nobody knows. So last year, if they don't change the distance fare, all of you be paying less. All of you want to pay less or you want to try and guess whether you pay more or pay less. <laughs> I can go on, uh, but I think uh, all of you came to listen to a person whose surname starts with T, right? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Leong. Now, just before I came here, I read a bit of news which was released. They say a PR has obtained the President Scholarship. A PR who can opt whether to become a Singaporean or not in later years. And yet, this lady is a young girl, has been given the most prestigious scholarship in our country to a PR what about our own citizens what about our own Singaporeans the president's scholarship has always been given to Singapore citizens and now they are given to a PR who can opt whether to become a Singaporean later on or not what kind of logic what kind of policy is that it hurts me, it pains me to my heart that this thing can happen to Singapore. The President's Scholarship is the most prestigious by giving it to a PR who does not, may not even in the future become a Singaporean. He means the value. It reduces the reputation and the prestige of the President's Scholarship. I condemn it, this move. Now, I hope you agree with me, don't you? Now, I really like to call upon the gentleman whose name became with T. I give you Mr. Tan King Lian, a man of integrity, a man of courage, and a man of the people, Mr. Tan King Lian. <laughs> 